violent acts and uh, various other manifestations of violence in these that appear, and I can only say appear to be traceable to what you might call a, uh, an amusement device or some sort. We cannot, uh, I'll put it this way, if we could make a case we would have done so, as of now we cannot. There's the Calypso explosion, there's the fire at the Forest Park lanes, uh, there are other instances. Uh, there are claims, or have been claims made by certain operators of people coming in and tearing their places up and trying to connect this with one operator or another. Uh, we've made no cases on it. This is, just, this is just information that we get and we try to check out. These things are very difficult to check out. I suppose there's nothing quite so difficult to make as an arson case. Committee investigates the possibility of antitrust violations by Fort Worth vending, BNB vending, in as much as very possibly, very likely, some of their machines are manufactured by them. They are the distributors. They are a loan company. They are a vending route. And at the same time, they do, at this time, I don't know how many outright own and control taverns within the area. Uh, the other suggestion that the committee and possibly uh, recommendation to the legislature that some legislation be enacted that vending companies be placed out of the loan business. Uh, the beer distributors cannot finance taverns, lounges, or make any investments and if uh, not outright, at least that if vending companies are permitted to assist financially in taverns or lounges, that it be done on a basis that the notes, chattel mortgages, be held by banks, they could co-sign them, but that the money not come directly from the vending company and the vending company be the loan institution. Feel that by the end of this month we'll have a substantial outbreak of flu, which we certainly would term as epidemic proportion. There is no doubt that the virus has been seeded practically everywhere in the United States. So it's a matter of, of timing and how fast really a substantial number of cases come down with it. Again, it depends, this depends very much on the susceptibility of the population. You will see, for example, in some parts of the United States where last year they did not experience much flu influenza, this year those areas were the ones that were hit more substantially. Uh, by the Doctor, how many cases would constitute an epidemic? Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't give you a numerical value to that. Any any time that there is a substantial number of cases over and above uh, the average incidence of the disease, uh, then that would be called an epidemic. Uh, well, how large a percentage of the population would you think would be expected by this? I think the estimate so far have been about 20 percent.
point now where a protective hard hat like this one is almost formal wear in this block of Elm Street. Today, an errant water main pushed up through the surface of Elm Street in virtually the same place right here where I'm standing that the street caved in nearly two years ago. The buckled pavement was reported early this morning, and before daylight, workers were busy patching the street. No matter how much this will be compared to the famous Elm Street cave-in of January 1967, though, public works officials say it's not the same. For one thing, the 67 cave-in made a hole halfway across Elm Street that required nearly one and a quarter million dollars and seven months to fix. The cause of that still hasn't been agreed on, though some engineers claim the blame should be placed on a shifting underground fault. By late afternoon, the blame for today's Elm Street problem was laid on a 10-inch cast iron water line feeding one main place. Officials say the line ruptured and water forced itself up through the pavement, causing ripples in the surface. In the largest place, about 10 by 5 feet. The major inconvenience seems to be to traffic, which had to be rerouted around the block to Pacific Avenue. And officials say the only repair work involved in the latest Elm Street problem is replacing the faulty water line. Well, there are those who say 67 was a bad year and 68 was one of the worst. 67 had its cave in, 68 now has its water ripples, and 1969 is only about two weeks away. Good luck, Elm Street. This is Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News. We uncovered no uh, illegal activity on the uh, part of anyone uh, whatsoever. Aren't there many more people that would be willing to come up here and testify before this? And that is correct. Uh, it top, the stopping point, if you put it that way, is occasioned by the length of time that we have to uh, devote to this. Our last uh, day in uh, being is January the 13th. Our committee goes out of existence on January the 14th. Uh, we still have to have some hearings in another city. We still have uh, five or six boxes of material to go through and correlate and get answers from. Uh, we have to have at least one more uh, public hearing, and then we have to write a report and some suggested legislation all between now and January the 14th.
he told me to don't move and trust me out and then uh, I was mad and I just, it was close, but I just grabbed for his hand and tried to jerk it out somehow. Now he fired three shots at you. Yeah. Uh, one of them uh, hit your belt buckle. Uh, when it hit you, did you think that you were actually shot uh, and yeah. hurt very badly? Yeah. Did that scare you a lot? No, it didn't scare me. It's his tongue, and I thought, sure, he, he punched me.